from the book of the great liberation since there is really no duality separation is unreal until duality is transcended and at one moment realized enlightenment cannot be attained both samsara and nirvana an inseparable unity are your own mind it is only because of deluded ideas which you are free to accept or reject that you wander in the world of samsara practice the dharma grasp the essence of these teachings and free yourself from every attachment when you seek your mind in its true state you will find it quite intelligible although it cannot be seen in its true state mind is naked immaculate transparent empty timeless uncreated unimpeded not realizable as a separate thing but as the unity of all things yet not composed of them undifferentiated self radiant indivisible and without qualities your own mind is not separate from other minds it shines forth unobscured for all living beings your own mind is originally as pure and empty as the sky to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind without beginning or ending your original wisdom has been shining forever like the sun to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind your original wisdom is as continuous and unstoppable as the current of a mighty river to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind when you realize that all phenomena are as unstable as the air they lose their power to fascinate and bind you to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind all phenomena are your own ideas self-conceived in the mind like reflections in a mirror to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind arising spontaneously and free as the clouds in the sky all phenomena fade away by themselves to know whether or not this is true look inside your own mind again and again look inside your own mind when you look outward into the emptiness of space you will find no place where the mind is shining when you look into your own mind in search of the radiance you will find nothing that shines this self originated clear light is eternal and unborn how strange and marvelous since it is unborn 
It cannot die. How strange and marvelous. Although it is absolute reality, there is no one to perceive it. How strange and marvelous. Although it wanders in samsara, it is undefiled by evil. How strange and marvelous. Although it sees the Buddha, it is unattached to good. How strange and marvelous. Although it is possessed by all beings, it is not recognized by them. How strange and marvelous. Although the clear light of reality shines inside their own mind, most people look for it outside. How strange and marvelous. Since there is nothing to meditate on, there is no meditation. Since there is nowhere you can go astray, there is no going astray. Without meditating, without going astray, look into the true state where self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-illumination shine resplendently. This is called the enlightened mind. These teachings are immeasurably deep and contain all wisdom. Although they are to be contemplated in a variety of ways, there are no two such things as contemplation and contemplator. When fully contemplated, these teachings merge with the seeker although when sought, the seeker himself cannot be found. Thereupon the goal of the seeking is attained and the end of the search. At this point there is nothing more to be sought and no need to seek anything. Although there are no two such things as knowing and not knowing. There are profound and innumerable forms of meditation and it is surpassingly excellent in the end to know your own mind. Since there are no two such things as meditation and meditator, if by those who practice or do not practice meditation the meditator is sought and not found, Thereupon the goal of meditation is reached and also the end of meditation itself. Since there are no two such things as meditation and object of meditation, there is no need to fall under the sway of ignorance for as the result of meditation on the original serenity of the mind, the uncreated wisdom instantaneously shines forth. Although there is innumerable variety of profound practices, they do not exist for your mind in its true state. For there are no two such things as existence and non-existence. Since there are no two such things as practice and practitioner, if by those who practice or do not practice, the practitioner of practice is sought and not found, thereupon the goal of practice is reached and also the end of practice itself. The uncreated, self-radiant wisdom of your original mind, actionless, immaculate, transcendent over acceptance and rejection, is itself the perfect practice.